This is the second half of electron gram staining to go through the actual procedure of how you complete a gram stain and then how you interpret and report your results. And so the first step in a gram stain procedure is to prepare a bacterial smear on a microscope slide. And so in order to prepare this smear, it's best to use a fresh bacterial culture. The optimal age for that is about 18 to 24 hours. And so usually before performing a gram stain, you would set up an overnight liquid culture of bacteria that grows up for about 18 to 24 hours um, in order to have nice new fresh cells um, on which to perform a gram stain. And so after you grow up your cells, you're going to suspend your bacterial cells in a drop of water on a microscope slide. So usually you place a small drop of water on the slide first, take a loop full of bacteria from your liquid culture, and mix it into that drop of water on the microscope slide. Um, and make sure that you can spread it to about the size of a nickel because you want this um, water drop containing your cells to fully air dry before you begin heat fixing it. And so you want to kind of keep the amount of liquid to a minimum and spread it as far as possible in order to give it an opportunity to dry within the next century. Um, and so after your slide <coughs> is fully air dried and those bacterial cells have um, started to adhere to the microscope slide, you're going to basically make them fully adhere by heat fixing the microscope slide or passing it through a flame of a Bunsen burner several times. Heat fixing is one place where people make errors in grim staining. Um, if you overheat fix your slide, um, if you uh, spend more than you know one to two seconds within the flame, um, the samples can become overheated and you can distort the shape of your cells. <laughs> so after you've made, um, prepared your smear and heat fixed your slide, you will first flood the smear with the primary stain, which is crystal violet. And then you would let that stain sit on top of the slide um, and do its magic, work its magic <laughs> for about a minute and then rinse the excess stain off with um, distilled water, which would give you, if you looked through the microscope at this point, um, a bunch of purple cells within your smear. So crystal violet is a purple dye. Um, it's positively charged and it'll bind to all of the cells on your slide, regardless of whether they are gram positive or gram negative bacteria. And so then you need to apply what's called your mordant and in the case of gram staining, this mordant is Graham's iodine. And so you will flood the smear in the same way you did with crystal violet, but this time with this brown solution of Graham's iodine and also let it stand for one minute to do its magic and then rinse that stain off with deionized water in the same way you remove the crystal violet. And after this mordant step, what has happened mechanistically inside of the cells is that you have created those crystal violet iodine complexes that will be really difficult to wash out of a gram positive cell and easy to wash out of a gram negative cell in the next step, which is the decolorizing step. So you're going in the decolorization step, you're gonna flood the smear with your decolorizer, which is usually 95% ethanol. And you're only gonna let that stand for five to 10 seconds. Over decolorizing is one of the main issues that people will have within the gram stain procedure because technically if you leave this decolorizer on for long enough, it will ultimately um, wash out the crystal violet iodine complexes from gram positive cells too and all of your cells will stain gram negative. And so decolorizing is a very short step, five to 10 seconds with the decolorizer is all you need. Um, and then you rinse any excess decolorizer off with um, deionized water as well. And so at the end of the decolorization process, what you would expect is there are some cells that would remain purple, your gram positives, and any gram negatives that you may have on the slide would be completely decolorized <coughs> from um, that addition of the ethanol. And so the last step of the gram stain is to apply counter stain 
where you flood your smear with that red dye called safranin, and you can let this stand for longer just to allow that counter stain an opportunity to get into any gram negative cells. Um, it can stand for about two minutes, and then you would rinse off any excess stain with water, and what you'd be left with is your gram positive cells, if they are there in purple, and any gram negative cells being pink. And what that looks like in an actual microscope image. So you can see on the left, you have the gram positive cells. They have this deep blue-ish purple color. And gram negative cells have sort of a lighter pink to red color. <clears throat> and so any purple cells would be interpreted as gram positive and pink cells would be interpreted as gram negative. And so when you report a gram stain, you're reporting three different things. You're going to report whether this, uh, the cells are gram positive or gram negative based on that um, pink or purple color. You're also going to report the shape of the cells and you'll also report any cellular arrangement um, or any kind of like grouping of those cells that you might observe under the microscope. And so once the slides are gram stained, you, um, they'll be viewed under a normal stereo microscope um, at 1000x, which is the oil immersion objective, and you will look at the color, the shape, and then the arrangement, and then that's what will be reported out. And so for this example here on the right, we would first look at the color of these cells to determine if they're gram positive or gram negative. They are dark purple, so they would be gram positive, and so that would be one result we can report out. We would then want to next look at the cellular shape. So whether they're round or a cocci, or whether they're elongated like a rod. And these are cocci. You can see the small spheres that make up these cells. And then we would look for any type of arrangement. And so these cells are arranged in groups of two. One, two, one, two, one, two which is an arrangement known as a diplococcus. And so when we were reporting the results for this particular slide here on the right, we would say it is a gram-positive diplococcus with a cocci shape. 